Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're all feeling well. Root Beer here, looking at another University of Waterloo math contest. This time it's going to be the grade 12 Euclid paper in 2012. If you'd like a copy of this contest, you can click the very first link down in the description and get a copy for yourself. I do always encourage you guys to try the papers uh, before reading the, the solutions put out by the University of Waterloo or watching uh, my solution videos. And if you want to try it out, give yourself two hours, 30 minutes. You're certainly allowed to have calculators. I've got mine handy. And there are 10 questions. These questions do increase in difficulty. So, you know, questions one and two and three should be mostly okay. Whereas something like question eight or nine or even 10 are something to really be attempted if you're very comfortable with the nature of the paper and, and how it's written, okay? So we're just gonna do one question at a time. So in this video, we're gonna look at question number one on our paper. So question one, we've got the two of these symbols here. These light bulb symbols just mean put your final answer, that's it. You can show a little bit of work if you want, but if you have the correct final answer for a light bulb question, you get full marks. Whereas this symbol here with uh, somebody writing with a pen on paper means you need a full solution. Justify everything, show your calculations, you know, if you use the Pythagorean, theor Pythagorean theorem, say things like, by the Pythagorean theorem, that sort of a thing, okay? So in addition to getting solutions, we're also going to talk a little bit about write-ups, okay? So let's get into question number 1A. John buys 10 bags of apples, each, which, uh, each of which contain 20 apples. If he eats 8 apples a day, how many days will it take him to eat the 10 bags of apples? Okay. So if we wanted to, we could show some work, but we, we know we've got 10 bags, 20 apples per bag. That gives me a total of 200 apples. So we're just showing our calculations here. Now he eats eight per day, okay? So how can we figure out how many days? Well, you take the 200, and you divide by eight, and you'll get 25 days, okay? If you want to, you could play around with, you know, units. He's got uh, 200 apples, he eats eight apples per day. We'll get your days units here, but it's just a matter of understanding which math operations correspond uh, to, to calculating days or calculating total number of apples, okay? But there we go, 25, and all you need is 25 or 25 days in the little box provided in their booklet, and then you move right along, okay? And that's what we're going to do. So uh, question 1B. Determine the value of sine 0 plus sine 60 plus sine 120 plus sine 180 plus sine 240, plus sine 300, plus sine 360, okay? So uh, this one, I mean, if you've got your calculator, and remember calculators are allowed, this isn't too bad. Okay. Uh, we're just going up by 60, and it looks like we're going all the way sort of around the circle. Now, you can just grab your calculator, compute, and that's perfectly fine, okay? But uh, if we remember... So I'm just going to show you another way because it's not very interesting uh, if I were to switch screens and you watch me plug things into a calculator. Okay, uh, let's get a better circle. You might remember, you might know the circle definitions. I'm going to draw my circle first and then I'll put the axes in. That seems like the smart thing to do. Uh, the circular definition for sine and cosine. Okay? So if we measure from the positive x-axis and we go around the circle this way, you make an angle of, say, 60 degrees, the height is going to be sine 60. Okay, and actually, 60 would probably be a bit steeper than that. Okay, and so in terms of heights, well, you can see things like sine of 0 degrees is just going to be flat, and sine of 180 degrees is just going to be flat against the circle. So there's zero height, there's zero y-coordinate there. So already we can see, ah, sine 0, sine 180, and sine 360 degrees, they're all just zero. And you might have known that already, or you can work that out with a calculator. But what else can we notice? Well, look at this sine 60 degrees, okay? There's the height of that. Now, if you go over here to sine 120, you get 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees. If you go another 60 degrees past the 180, you're actually going down. But because everything is with 60 degrees here, we get some congruent triangles. Okay, we get another one over here, and we can actually see that this downward bit, this negative 
height of the triangle, which happens to be the value of sine 240, is going to cancel out with this positive, because they're the same triangle. One's just got a positive y direction, the other one's got a negative y direction. So adding them up cancels out, and the same thing over here. In fact, all of these signs are the same value, which is uh, root 3 over 2, and you might know that. But if we look at it with a nice little circle picture, we can actually see that sine 120 and sine 240 add up to 0, and sine 60 and sine 300 also add up to 0. They just cancel each other out. Okay, well, if we go back here, if that one and that one cancel and that one and that one cancel, and these ones were 0 to start off with, we'd best have a value of just plain old 0. And of course, you could have gotten that with a calculator. You could have gotten that if you really knew your sine angles, you know, sine of 120, root 3 over 2, sine of 240, negative root 3 over 2, and that's fine too. But sometimes it's useful for a, a sort of using a circle picture like this, because imagine a contest where you don't get a calculator. And imagine a contest where they were going around by, say, 18 degrees at a time. Where you so you wouldn't necessarily know sine of 18 or sine 36 or something being able to reason with the circle and see things cancel out can certainly help you and so there are a bunch of ways to do that one and all we really care about is that final answer of zero now let's get into c part here we're actually going to have to show our work if we want full marks okay a set of integers has a sum of 420 and an average of 60. okay we can actually stop right now and work out how many integers we have from this information. It'll be 7, but let's continue reading. If one of the integers in the set is 120, what is the average of the remaining integers in the set? Okay, so if we know one of the numbers is 120, removing that, we, we, we could remove that easily from the sum. Okay. But we need to sort of explain our work. So the average is the sum of the numbers divided by the number of numbers. Okay. So we could say something, because we want to write it up nice and neat. Let's, let's say something like, let n equal the number of numbers in the set. Okay. We know the average is 60, and we know the sum is 420. So we can quickly rearrange this to see n is 420 over 67. There are seven numbers. We could say something like, without 120, the sum of the remaining six numbers, so I'm telling them I know that there will be six left, remaining six numbers, is 420 minus 120, which is 300. And so now I just quickly calculate the new average is 300 over 6, or 50. And that's what they want, but... I gotta show my work to get this, this new average, okay? I gotta show my work. So probably a mark for the 50, probably a mark for working out that there are seven numbers, uh, maybe a mark for uh, getting this 300 here, something to that effect. Uh, this is probably a four mark question, but uh, I'm not exactly sure what they'd be looking for. They don't release marking information uh, out in general, okay? But there we go, that's question 1C, and that's really about as much of a write-up as you need. You don't have to work with, you know, paragraphs of explanation. So here I clearly state how I know how averages work. I make a definition for n. I calculate n using the numbers they give me. I state how I'm getting my new numbers. And then I get my final answer with a calculation. That's it. Okay. So up next, of course, we're going to look at question number two and then question number three. So feel free to jump around. And if you did follow my advice, downloaded a copy of the contest for yourself and uh, tried out the questions. You know, if you found question four to be particularly difficult, jump ahead to question four. I will see you there. OK, so I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you for more math in the future.